And this isn't even an abstract fight specifically for the senators who are going to be voting on this nomination. One Democratic senator who says he will vote no on the Barrett nomination is Senator Gary Peters of Michigan. Senator Peters is a low-key, sort of low-profile, middle-of-the-road Democratic senator from Michigan. He's in his first term. He's currently running for a second term. His Republican opponent in this election is a man named John James. He's uh, trying for a second time to win a Senate seat in Michigan. More than anything else, John James is associated with two political movements on the right. Uh, number one is unwavering, almost worshipful support for Donald Trump. And number two, the anti-abortion movement, which has supported him hammer and tongs. Because James not only wants Roe versus Wade overturned, he even says that women who have been forcibly impregnated by a rapist should then be forced by the government to bear the rapist's child. That's what he describes as a 100% pro-life position. Senator Gary Peters, on the other hand, the incumbent Democratic senator, is pro-choice. And Senator Peters has just done something that no other senator, male or female, has ever done before. Senator Gary Peters of Michigan has just gone public with his family's personal story about abortion, explaining that with this nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court and what that's going to mean for women's rights in this country, now is the time for people to speak up on this issue, particularly people in power, particularly if they have personal experience with this. This is an absolutely unprecedented thing that Michigan Senator Gary Peters has just done. No sitting senator has ever done anything publicly like this before. And the story itself is remarkable. It will move you. Um, we've got that story and Senator Gary Peters here live. Next. Senator Gary Peters of Michigan, a Democrat who's up for re-election this year, um, has just become the first sitting U.S. Senator in history to go public with his own family story about abortion, uh, saying that he felt compelled to do so given the threat posed to women's rights by the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the U.S. Supreme Court. Senator Peters told the story um, that his, uh, his family's experience to reporter Laura Bassett uh, for Elle magazine. Here's part of what it says. In the late 1980s in Detroit, Gary Peters and his then wife Heidi were pregnant with their second child, a baby they very much wanted. Heidi was four months along when her water broke, leaving the fetus without amniotic fluid, a condition it could not possibly survive. The doctor told the Peters to go home and wait for a miscarriage to happen naturally. But it didn't happen. They went back to the hospital the next day, and the doctor detected a faint heartbeat. He recommended an abortion because the fetus still had no chance of survival, but it wasn't an option due to a hospital policy banning the procedure. So the doctor sent the couple again home to wait for a miscarriage. Peter says, quote, the mental anguish someone goes through is intense, trying to have a miscarriage for a child that was wanted. As they waited, Heidi's health deteriorated. When she returned to the hospital on the third day, after another night without a natural miscarriage, the doctor told her the situation was dire. She could lose her uterus in a matter of hours if she wasn't able to have an abortion. And if she became septic from the uterine infection, she could die. The doctor appealed to the hospital's board for an exception to their anti-abortion policy. He was denied. Peter says, quote, I still vividly remember he left a message on the answering machine saying they refused to give me permission, not based on good medical practice, simply based on politics. I recommend you immediately find another physician who can do this procedure quickly. The Peters were able to get into another hospital right away because they were friends with its chief administrator. Heidi was rushed into an emergency abortion that saved her uterus and possibly her life. The whole experience was painful and traumatic, Heidi shared in a statement. If it weren't for urgent and critical medical care, I could have lost my life. Reflecting on the experience now, Senator Gary Peters says it enacted an incredible, excuse me, it exacted an incredible emotional toll. So why go public with it? He says, quote, it's important for folks to understand that these things happen to folks every day. I've always considered myself pro-choice. I believe women should be able to make these decisions themselves. But when you live it in real life, you realize the significant impact it can have on a family. It's important for folks who are, who are willing to tell these stories to tell them, especially now, Peters says. The new Supreme Court nominee could make a decision that will have major ramifications for reproductive health for women for decades to come. This is a pivotal moment for reproductive freedom. 
Again, no sitting senator has ever before gone public with a personal family story like this. Uh, but Gary Peters just has. Joining us now is Senator Gary Peters from the great state of Michigan. Senator, I know it's a, it's a busy time right now, both in the Senate and in the middle of your re-election campaign. Thanks for taking time to talk with us tonight. Good to be with you, Rachel. So I know that being a public servant and being a public figure uh, necessarily go hand in hand, but I have to imagine it, was, it still must have been a hard decision um, for you and your family to tell the world about this experience, to, put, to just put this out to the world. Well, it, it is tough. It's it's not easy. And even though it occurred uh, many years ago, when you relive the experience, it uh, still brings uh, great pain. And uh, the mental anguish uh, that Heidi went through, that I went through, uh, lives on. And, and I think it's just so important that folks uh, understand that people can be put in these situations uh, that are so difficult. Uh, and people go through these uh, incidents uh, uh, today uh, and on a regular basis. So often these voices are not heard in the abortion debate, and you'll hear other stories, but these are the stories that folks go through every day. These are, these are babies that are wanted. Uh, this is something that uh, a family looks forward to, and then a pregnancy goes bad, uh, and uh, medical treatment isn't provided uh, because someone is making a decision not based on, on medicine, not best best medical practice, uh, but uh, politics. Uh, and that's simply uh, unacceptable. And uh, right now, when we're in the midst of a debate for a new Supreme Court justice, they may overrule Roe versus Wade. This is gonna become a bigger issue for families uh, for for a long time. It's it's important for these stories uh, to be told. And, and I know uh, women, uh, what they go through in losing a child and the anguish they go through, I experienced it firsthand uh, with my wife and it's, it's the whole family, it's uh, husbands, it's other loved ones. These are decisions that need to be made by a woman. They are incredibly difficult, uh, hard, hard decisions. They need to be made with uh, the advice of a physician and the medical advice and, and folks that uh, the, the woman may want to bring into that, uh, into that uh, decision. But to have it second guessed by a hospital board who is bound by some sort of politics or whatever it may be, you know, I, as you mentioned, I will never forget that that recording. To get that news, that horrible news uh, on a recording machine, and understand that we needed to find someone right away. Now we we were fortunate; we knew someone who could get uh, 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 her into a Heidi into a uh, the, actually the department head for. OBGYN who could look at her and he said immediately we have to do this uh, action. This is very, very serious. There are a lot of families that may not have and don't have that option and it puts uh, folks in serious medical harm. Uh, we've got to understand these are the stories that people go through and and the anguish that 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 you experience it just doesn't go away for a long long time and and people don't want to tell these stories they're painful stories they're stories that they they live with uh, and and feel alone and feel that they're suffering uh, in ways that they can't share uh, that's not right uh, we have to understand uh, that these are are these are medical procedures that are, necess are necessary for a woman's health uh, and, uh, and many times, uh, her life. And Senator, I know you um, have said that part of the reason that you needed to speak out now is because of what's going to likely happen on the Supreme Court if Judge Barrett is confirmed. She's uh, signed on to an anti-abortion advertisement that called uh, the Roe versus Wade decision, which prevents states from outlawing abortion. She called it barbaric. Um, she, that was a statement from a group that also says fertility treatment ought to be criminalized. People ought to go to jail if they have fertility treatment. Um, Democratic senators on the committee today tried to pin her down both on those on those views, but also on her not disclosing those things to the committee. I wonder, given your personal experience, given what I know has been a very intense response to your disclosing this personal story from your family, how central do you think this should be to her evaluation as a nominee for the court? Obviously, there's her, her impact on the court is going to have is, is going to be wide and is going to be a lot of different issues. How central should this this set of issues be? I think it, it it has to be central, and and uh, this this puts a real face on what is involved when you are approving a Supreme Court nominee. This is someone who's going to sit on the bench and will likely be on the bench for for perhaps decades uh, to come. 
uh, and the decisions uh, that are made have substantial consequences in people's lives. And uh, what I went through, I know others uh, go through every day, the, the outpouring of emails that I have received uh, from folks uh, around the country and women who, who have experienced uh, this similar types of situation uh, feel that they're, they're not heard, they're not seen. And to think that you're going to put someone on a Supreme Court that's going to make this nightmare for, for many people uh, very real, I think uh, has to be part of any decision made as to who we put on that bench. And, and the decisions that they're going to make have major ramifications for people's lives for a long period of time. Folks need to tell these stories. People need to know uh, what actually happens every day for folks all across this country. Senator Gary Peters uh, of great state of Michigan uh, in his first term currently running uh, for a second term. Sir, I know this is, uh, as you said, this is, a, this is a hard thing to decide to do, but it's a, it's a public service of a really unique kind. Thanks for helping us understand tonight. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much. All right. Much more ahead here tonight. Stay with us.